Immaculate Mary, your praise we sing. You reign now in heaven with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. So we had a very good uh, uh, past, uh, uh, past week, uh, pre really preparing for, for Pentecost. Uh, we did uh, like a Pentecost Tridium, or you might call it Pentecost Trilogy. <laughs> we did the Novena, the nine-day Novena, and then after that we did excellent uh, wonderful uh, pentecost vigil uh last saturday night and then uh and then father mark you know preached a very powerful uh homily on on, on uh, pentecost sunday so if you want to uh look into those videos it's it's available on saint mary's ottawa youtube channel so i would like to welcome uh everyone who's uh watching online and today we celebrate the memorial of Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church. So Deacon Marcus will be speaking more about that. Okay? So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Let us pray. O God, Father of mercies, whose only begotten Son, as he hung upon the cross, chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, to be our mother also. Grant, we pray, that with her loving help, your church may be more fruitful day by day, and exalting in the holiness of her children, may draw to her embrace all the families of the peoples. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Adam had eaten from the tree, the Lord God called to him and said, Where are you? The man said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity 
between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. The man named his wife Eve because she was the mother of all the living. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response today. You are the great pride of our nation. You are the great pride of our nation. O daughter, you are blessed by the Most High God above all other women on earth. And blessed be the Lord our God who created the heavens and the earth. You are the great pride of our nation. Your praise will never depart from the hearts of those who remember the power of God. May God grant this to be a perpetual honor to you, and may he reward you with blessings. You are the great pride of our nation. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Holy Virgin Mary, and worthy of all praise. For from you arose the Son of Justice, Christ our Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that moment, the disciple made a place for her in his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So today we are celebrating Mary, Mother of the Church. And there are many titles we can use to, to speak of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For instance, Mary, the star of a new evangelization, Mary, the Queen of the Apostles, or Mary, the Immaculate Conception, the list goes on. And if you're looking for a great compilation of Marian titles to pray with, may I suggest praying the Litany of Loretto, which was composed in the Middle Ages and you could find it online. Marian titles reveal aspects of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whether in regards to her identity or her mission with Jesus, but they also reveal aspects of our relationship with Mary. And today we have the opportunity to reflect upon the title, Mary, Mother of the Church. In 2018, Pope Francis stated that the Church throughout the world should celebrate Mary as Mother of the Church every year on the Monday following Pentecost. And although this memorial is, is relatively new in the Church calendar, it's not a new title for Mary. The earliest evidence of his title comes from a fourth century by St. Ambrose but it's been reaffirmed over the centuries directly and indirectly by various writings and devotions. And so today, with the the limited time that I have, my goal is to try to provide a brief teaching on Mary as the mother of a church. First of all, Mary is the mother of God. She's the Theotokos, and this was declared in the Third Ecumenical Council, the Council of Ephesus in 431. During that time, there was a dispute on 
how to understand the humanity and the divinity of, of Jesus Christ, and also how Mary fit in the picture as his mother. And Nestorius and his followers, they denied that Mary was the mother of God, and they ended up falling into heresy. And contrary to Nestorius and, and rooted in the teachings of the ecumenical councils, we believe that Jesus is one person, a divine person with, with two natures. Jesus is both fully God and fully man. And since you cannot be a mother to a nature, you can only be a mother to a person, Mary is the mother of Jesus. And without Mary, there would be no Jesus, Jesus who is truly God. Mary is thus rightfully declared the mother of God. But in addition to calling Mary the mother of God, we can also call Mary the mother of a church because Jesus entrusted his mother to John, the beloved disciple at the foot of a cross, as we heard in the gospel today. In doing so, Jesus entrusted Mary not only to be John's mother, but to be our mother as well. John represents all the disciples, and in our first reading, we, we heard of Eve, described as the mother of all the living. Mary is the new Eve. She's the new mother of all the living, of all mankind. And if, if Mary can be said to be mother of all disciples, and if Mary is the mother of all mankind, then certainly she can also be said to be the mother of a church. Mary is intimately linked to the church. During the Second Vatican Council, the Pope and the bishops, as they were writing the various encyclicals, there was at first a disagreement on whether or not they should write an encyclical just based on Mary or whether they should put Mary within another document, on the document on the church. And in the end, the latter was followed, and the final chapter of Lumen Gentium is devoted purely to Mary. And far from lessening Mary's role, I think this is so fitting because Mary cannot be seen apart from the church. She's intimately linked and bound to it, just as she's intimately linked and bound to Jesus. And in saying that Mary is the mother of church, this takes nothing it takes nothing away from Jesus. Jesus remains the head of the church, and Mary remains as a member of the church. And just as Mary is a descendant of Adam, Mary still required salvation from Jesus. But Mary, as we know, she was saved in a unique way, where God preserved her ahead of time from all stain of sin. Mary was immaculately conceived, and Lumen Gentium states that Mary was endowed with a high office and dignity of being the mother of a son of God, by which account she was also the beloved daughter of a father and the temple of the Holy Spirit. So Mary, while being a member of a church, a member of a body of Christ, is the most perfect member apart from God, so much so that she becomes an image of a church herself. And just as the church remains at the center of salvation history, Mary remains at the center of salvation history. She gave her fiat at the Annunciation, where the Holy Spirit overshadowed her and the Incarnation took place. She is a woman spoken of of Genesis 3.15, which we heard in the first reading today, where God foretold his plan of salvation after the original sin. St. Irenae said that the knot of Eve's disobedience was untied by the obedience of Mary. With the Virgin Eve bound by her unbelief, the Virgin Mary loosened by her faith. Then we have Mary at the foot of a cross, where a church was born from Jesus' side. She was also with the disciples, awaiting the Holy Spirit in the upper room at Pentecost, which we celebrated yesterday. She was praying and interceding with them that they too may experience what she was already experiencing, what she was already living, she who is the spouse of the Holy Spirit. Where Mary is, there is the Holy Spirit. Thus Mary helped the early church and continues to help the church today through her prayers and intercession. And this takes nothing away from Jesus. Quoting again from Lumen Gentium, the maternal duty of Mary towards men in no way obscures or diminishes this unique mediation of Christ, but rather shows his power. For all the salvific influence of the Blessed Virgin Mary on men originates not from some inner necessity, but from the divine pleasure. It flows forth from the superabundance of the merits of Christ. It rests on his meditation or mediation, depends entirely on it, and draws all its power from it. 
in no way does it impede, but rather does it foster and immediate and foster the immediate union of a faithful with Christ. So when Protestants think Catholics worship Mary, this stems from a misunderstanding on what Catholics actually believe. Catholics do not worship Mary, but we do venerate and give her devotion and honor which Christ himself desired to have for her as his mother. Another way in which we see Mary's role still today within the church is through Marian apparitions. Think of, for instance, Our Lady of Guadalupe or Our Lady of Lourdes or Our Lady of Fatima, just to name a few. Mary has appeared throughout the centuries and she continues to appear. Some of these have been approved and others the church has yet to speak on definitively. But what is clear is that Mary is very much active and still part of the church today. Like a mother who watches over, who guides, who warns and protects her children, so too Mary watches over. She guides, she warns and protects her children today. She guides her children not to herself, not to bring herself glory, but always drawing them closer to her son, Jesus. And so today, as we celebrate Mary as the mother of a church, today, the day after Pentecost, we ask and implore Mary once more to come to our aid, to draw us closer to her son, to intercede and implore his mercy upon us and upon the whole world. As I said in the beginning of my homily, there are many titles we can use for the Blessed Virgin Mary. These titles reveal aspects of the Blessed Virgin Mary, whether in regards to her identity or her mission with Jesus. But as I said, they also reveal aspects of our relationship with her. Mary is your mother. As Jesus Christ said to John, he once says more to you now, behold your mother. This is a great gift, a gift not of something, but a gift of someone, a person who is perfectly living, united with God in heaven. And she desires to journey with you on a daily basis, journeys with the church on a daily basis. She desires to come to your aid and draw you closer to her son. St. Louis de Montfort stated that by going through Mary to Jesus, this is the easiest, it's the shortest, it's the perfect and most secure way of obtaining union with Jesus. And so while the month of May is over, a month in which we honored Mary, May your devotion to Mary not cease. For Mary's love for the church, her love for you as as her child, has never ceased. But may your devotion and your relationship continue to grow. May it continue to deepen as God desires it to. So let us take a moment now before we continue with our Mass to, to pray for that grace, a deepening of our devotion to Mary, our deepening of our love for her, deepening of our ability to receive that love so we may draw closer to Jesus. Let us offer now our intentions to our, to, to our Father. We pray for Pope Francis that the Lord will grant him the grace that he needs right now, Lord, to, to, to lead uh, the Catholic Church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all bishops, priests, religious, deacons, uh, that they would be faithful to the calling that God has called them to do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That for all the faithful right now, that they may grow in their devotion to Mary as their mother let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer for those who are uh, suffering from this uh, uh, pa- pandemic uh, you know those those who have acqu- uh, uh, acquired this illness we pray for healing we pray for those who are on the front line risking their lives in order to serve the people of god let us pray to the lord lord hear our prayer we pray especially for uh, special intentions of this Mass for the conversion and intention of Michael Cassie, Arian and Reed B, offered by Linda Cobb. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So, Father in heaven, we come before you as your sons and your daughters, trusting in your love and your mercy, that you will hear and answer our prayers according to your holy will. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Our Lady of Good Counsel, please be our daily guide. Our Lady of Good Counsel, we come to you from far and wide. Mother of Christ, Mother most pure, cause of our joy, gate of heaven. Help of the poor, show us the way, Mother of all, be near us. Our Lady of Good Counsel, please be our daily guide. Our Lady of Good Counsel, we come to you from far and wide. Mystical Rose, health of the sick, Queen of all saints, help of Christians. Help of the poor, show us the way. Mother of all, be near us. Our Lady of good counsel, please be our daily guide. Our Lady of Good Counsel, we come to you from far and wide. We come to you from far and wide. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive our offerings, O Lord, and transform them into the mystery of salvation, so that by its power we may be set aflame with the charity of the Virgin Mary, Mother of the Church, and with her, may, with, and with her may be united more closely to the work of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to proclaim your greatness with a praise as we honor the Blessed Virgin Mary. Receiving your word in her immaculate heart, she was found worthy to conceive him in her virgin's womb. And giving birth to the Creator, she nurtured the beginnings of the church. Standing beside the cross, she received the, the, the testament of divine love and took to herself as sons and daughters, all those who by the death of Christ are born to heavenly life. As the apostles awaited the spirit you had promised, she joined her supplication to the prayers of the disciples and so became the pattern of the church at prayer. Raised to the glory of heaven, she accompanies your pilgrim church with a mother's love and watches in kindness over the church's homeward steps until the Lord's day shall come in glorious splendor. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ascended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Terence, and Marcel, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we are married to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Jesus, Son of Mary, fount of life alone, now we hail thee present on thine altar throne. Humbly we adore Thee, Lord of endless might, in the mystic symbols veiled from earthly sight. Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, how can I love thee as I ought? And how revere this wondrous gift, so far surpassing hope or thought? Sweet sacrament with thee Make us love thee more and more. Oh, make us love thee more and more. Let us pray. Having received the pledge of redemption and of life, we humbly pray, O Lord, that with the blessed Virgin's motherly help, your church may teach all nations by proclaiming the gospel and through the grace of the outpouring of the Spirit, fill the whole earth through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, again, yeah, just a reminder that um, uh, Shalom World TV is also broadcasting our daily masses uh, here at St. Mary's. Uh, I think the schedule is on Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. Uh, so you could also watch the Daily Mass of St. Mary's on, on Shalom World TV. Uh, and then you could see, I think there's a link there of uh, Daily Masses. There. I think they have a, a Daily Masses like every hour. And uh, so, uh, yeah, our time slot is Tuesday and Thursday, 9 a.m. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May mighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And with our Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Hail, Queen of Heaven, the ocean star, Guide of the wanderer here below. Thrown on life's search, we claim thy care. Save us 
us from peril and from woe. Mother of Christ, star of the sea, pray for 